A classic argument for long-term investors is if an investor will be better off buying into a dividend growth focus ETF or strictly buying into a growth focus ETF instead. Now this debate has multiple angles and arguments on either side that offer a distinct better option and that are all worth a discussion. But in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into one of the most popular dividend growth ETFs, otherwise known as SEHD, and compare it to one of the most popular growth ETFs, known as SEHG. Now make sure to stick around because there's a lot to go through. Right after you, please drop a like in this video and subscribe for more future content like this. Now before we go any deeper, comparing and contrasting SEHD versus SEHG, let's first look into SEHD, the dividend growth ETF that most all dividend growth investors love, and see exactly what the ETF has to offer. Now this ETF strategy and objective is pretty straightforward. The investment seeks to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses the total return of the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index. To pursue its goal, the fund generally invests in stocks that are included in this index. The index is designed to measure the performance of high dividend yielding stocks issued by US companies that have a record of consistently paying dividends, selected for fundamental strength relative to their peers. Based on financial ratios, the fund will invest at least 90% of its net assets into stocks. Now some more highlights about this ETF, a straightforward low cost fund offering potential tax efficiency. The fund can serve as part of the core or complement in a diversified portfolio, tracks an index focused on quality and sustainable dividends, and invests in stocks selected for fundamental strength relative to its peers based on financial ratios. Now looking a little bit deeper into this ETF's performance, as far as ETF price alone in the max timeframe, since around 2011, this ETF is up around 182.81%, and this is not dividends included. The 52 week range for this ETF is 65.96 as of the low and 79.49 as of the high. The expense ratio for SCHD is just 0.06%, which is pretty close to just about the lowest expense ratio you're going to find on the market when it comes to high quality ETFs. Now the fund does pay a nice juicy dividend quarterly, which we're going to look at here in a second. And the assets under management for this ETF is 48.77 billion. Now like we kind of touched on earlier, this ETF does have a very specific method on how to pick the stocks within the ETF's holdings. The current holding breakdown is industrials at 18%, healthcare just over 16%, Financials at almost 15%, Consumer Defensive at 12.6, Technology at 12.14, Energy at 9.6, Consumer Cyclical at 9.5, Communication at 4.3, Basic Material just under 2, Utilities and Cash just under 1. Now this fund normally holds just around 100 different stocks within its basket of stocks, and the stocks within this portfolio are going to change on a consistent basis, normally once a year. But the top 10 holdings as of right now for SCHD are companies like Amgen, Cisco, AbbVie, The Home Depot, Broadcom, Coca-Cola, Merrick, Chevron, UPS, and Pepsi. Now again, all the companies within SCHD do pay a nice solid dividend, and on top of that, a lot of the companies have some pretty impressive dividend growth. To look deeper into that, we see that SCHD has a current trillion 12 month dividend yield of 3.54%, which is not a bad starting dividend yield at all considering the price appreciation historically for this ETF. So for investors buying into this ETF, they are not only going to expect the potential for some price appreciation for this ETF long term, but also a nice starting dividend yield that's going to pay a decent amount of cash flow right off the bat. Now the trailing 12 month dividend growth rate for the CTF is 7.13%. Now in my experience, a dividend growth rate of anything over 10% is pretty exceptional. So even though the trailing 12 month dividend growth rate is under 10% as of right now so far, the three year, the five year, and the 10 year paint a very different picture. SEHD's three year dividend growth rate is around 12%, the five year almost 14%, and the 10 year over 11%. Which means historically speaking, this ETF has consistently paid more and more dividends to their shareholders over the last 10 to 14 years. Now to be more specific, just around 10 years ago, September 22nd, 2013, SCHD paid a dividend of 23 cents per share. Now fast forward 10 years later, SCHD is paying anywhere from 60 to 70 plus cents per share per quarter. So in the last 10 years or so, the dividend has nearly tripled, paying investors much more in the form of dividends for their exact same investment. So now that we dug deep into the SCHD ETF and uncovered most of the ETF's greatness, let's next dig into SCHG and see exactly what this monster growth ETF has to offer. Now first heading over to the Charles Schwab Asset Management website, let's first learn a little bit more of what SCHG has to offer. So first, one thing that stands out to me is the total expense ratio is just 0.04%. Now generally speaking, anything below, I would say 0.1% is a relatively cheap expense ratio, 
but 0.04% is one of the cheapest expense ratios across any ETF in the market. Which means for long-term investors like myself, holding onto this ETF long-term will not cut into too much of the profits later on. Now it then says that the objective of the ETF is that the fund's goal is to track as closely as possible before fees and expenses the total return of the Dow Jones US large cap growth total stock market index. Some more facts about the fund, the inception date was 12-11-2009. The fund is a passively managed fund and the assets under management, the total assets, is over $18 billion. Now looking a little bit deeper into the Schwab US large cap growth ETF's return as far as on the max time frame. Now this is the exact reasons on why some investors absolutely love this ETF. This ETF is up 469% and that is just in the last 12 or 13 years. In the last 10 years, this fund is up 261%. And as we go through these different timeframes, you can see exactly how much this fund has returned on an annualized basis. On the five-year timeframe, 83.31% return. Now the one-year timeframe has been a little bit rougher because of course the drops that we saw in 2022 into 2023. But year to date, this fund is up 32.29%. And that's even after the recent small drop off where SCHG was trading at $78 per share just a few weeks back. Now, just to give some more context, the S&P 500 index, one of the most popular investments for pretty much any long-term investor, year to date has seen a 14.27% return, which generally speaking is very, very good. But once again, looking at the Schwab US large cap growth ETF's year to date return, it's not even comparable. Now, digging into the exact reason on why this ETF has performed so well over the past 10 plus years, and definitely so well year to date, it's of course because of the holding breakdown. Now this ETF has around 45% technology, which gives this ETF a higher beta than other ETFs out there, but if and when the market does turn bullish, technology stocks in general have a tendency to really move up in price very quickly, which is definitely partially how this ETF has seen so much massive amounts of return over the past 10 plus years. Now the next biggest category is healthcare at 13.8%, communication at 12.8%, consumer cyclical at 12.1%. Financials at just over 6%, industrials at 3%, consumer defensive at 1.8%, basic material at 1.8%, energy at 1.5%, real estate at 1.1%, and utilities and cash under 1%. Now when I show you the top holdings in this ETF, it's going to be very obvious on why this ETF has performed so well and why, in my opinion, of course I could be wrong, but in my opinion, why this ETF is going to continue to perform well long, long into the future. The top 10 holdings being Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Alphabet, Meta, Tesla, United Health Group, and Eli Lilly. Now, of course, because SCHG does track the Dow large cap, there are going to be 245 different holdings in this ETF, which makes the ETF pretty well diversified, which for the most part doesn't really matter all that much when the top 10 holdings are companies like these, which once again, when the market turns bullish, these companies in general perform or have performed very, very well. Now the Schwab US large cap growth ETF does pay a very small dividend. And although the dividend score is honestly pretty bad considering the trailing 12 month dividend yield is 0.46%, the trailing 12 month dividend growth rate has actually dropped and the 10 year dividend growth rate being 2.6%, which is much, much lower than what pretty much any dividend growth investor is looking for. The fact of the matter is that investors buy into this ETF because they want to see some growth. They want to see their portfolio grow in a relatively short amount of time very, very quickly. And for the most part, other than a few times in history during massive macro events, that's exactly what this ETF has been able to do. So now that we thoroughly know exactly what SCHD and what SCHG has to offer and why they have investors on both sides very interested, I think it's only fair to stack the two ETFs up right next to each other and compare their total performance using the metric total return, which is price return and dividends included, to see exactly which ETF would have been a better investment over various different timeframes. So year to date, this is not even comparable. SCHD is actually down 0.69%, and this is even with dividends included, remember, where SCHG is up 34.65%. Now over the last year, SCHD is basically flat again, and SCHG is up 13.61%. So any time for the most part in the last year or so, investors would have been much better off taking the growth route. But over the last three years, things are all of a sudden starting to change. Investors would have been much better off buying into SEHD with a 44.39% return, where G returned 29.25%, which in all honesty, over the last three years, either way, in my opinion, those are honestly two very decent returns. 
But finally, on the fiber time frame, stretching this thing out over 1,820 days, SCHD has returned 65.9%, which is very impressive, once again, in my opinion. But SEHG has returned 92.14%, which is absolutely incredible. So where do we go from here in the argument of more so growth investing versus dividend growth investing? Now, for me personally, in my portfolios, I like to have a diversified mix of everything. Buying into SEHD for the dividend growth potential, and of course, SEHG, because of the holding breakdowns and because of the massive, massive growth potential that the ETF could continue to see in the future. I also think that it has a lot to do with the individual investor strategy. If an investor favors cash flow over overall growth, then of course, picking the ETF that gives off more cash flow and maybe even sacrificing some total return might be the right option. But for an investor that really, really favors overall growth at whatever cost, then of course, a growth-focused ETF would probably be better for their strategy. But in the conversation, dividend growth versus growth or SEHD versus SEHG, if you could only hold on to one for the rest of time, which ETF would it be and why? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like in it and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.